When I began diving into Ready or Not's lore, I did not expect to come across what we will be discussing today. After establishing the overall world of Ready or Not in the prior episode, go check that out if you haven't seen it yet, I felt as if I had a pretty good idea of what to expect in further missions. I was wrong. This mission has so many layers that it would make your greenest ogre blush. Despite the fact that there are only two hostels on this map and an overabundance of traps, Jesus. After trial and error, I was able to finally clear out the map and take a look at everything. And my god, do we have a juicy episode today. Welcome to the Ready or Not lore series where in today's episode we will be discussing a lethal obsession. This video will be divided into two sections, the first being all in-game slash developer confirmed information, and the second being my own theory as to what is happening. If you wish to jump to a specific section, there will be timestamps in the description. along the outskirts of Los Sueños, ex-United States Intelligence Agency analyst Gerard Scott and his associates make their final stand. The USIA is basically the in-universe version of the CIA, like how in Grand Theft Auto, the Federal Investigation Bureau is their in-universe version of the FBI. While still working for the USIA, Gerard was performing a multitude of illegal activities, such as using his power and accessibility to spy on law enforcement agencies within Los Sueños. He was eventually caught and potentially arrested or simply let go from the USIA. I'm not entirely sure. Since his release, Gerard has developed a delusional obsession with the LSPD and focuses all his effort on destroying them. One day, Gerard waited out front of the East McCade Police Department with a loaded gun after setting a car on fire in front of the department. He then shot and killed the five officers who attempted to extinguish the vehicle. Witnesses on the street reported his vehicle as he drove away, thus leading to the raid on his property. Gerard's cabin contains three stories with four different entrances. Looking around the upstairs and ground floor, we can tell Mr. Scott isn't all quite there. This place is messy and unorganized with drawings and writings all along the walls. Before we get into that, let's start with the basement. Entering the basement, we see it's Walter White's wet dream. This is because Gerard is obsessed with the production of ricin, a compound that... You know what, Walter can just explain this one. They're castor beans. We are going to process them into ricin. It's an extremely effective poison. It's toxic in small doses, also fairly easy to overlook during an autopsy. Outside the cabin are rows and rows of cultivated plants containing these castor beans, the main ingredient needed for the poison, with dried bean paste and jars of white powder littering the basement. To carry out his plan of mailing coated packages to the police departments across Los Sueños, Gerard invented a homemade device that aerosolizes ricin, turning it into a sprayable form. And as we can clearly see to test its effectiveness, Gerard captured small animals and carried out experiments documenting how each animal suffered. Scattered around the cabin, there are seven audio tapes that give us a little more insight into Gerard's mental state. The state is set. They wouldn't come to me. So I went to them. They'll send their best now. But it won't be good enough. It won't be long. I removed the pawns. Now the ones I really want will come to me. They'll be playing my game now. By my rules. I'll show them who the puppets really are. This is the end. They'll judge me when it's finished. They'll lie. Say he was a bad man. An evil man. Mad man. It has to be done. It has to be cleansed at every level. Only then will everyone see it. This is my last mission. When mine is over, others will start theirs. My night they may be watching me, but I'm also watching them. I'm better than they are. I always 
was. They try. They try, but not hard enough. Food. Water. Air. It's all diseased. I have the cure. They'll try and stop me. I can't let them. I won't let them. Judge will come here. You'll have to. It has to be him. I've seen his training. His methods. I know what kind of man he is. Part of the cycle, just like me. In a never-ending game. I'll show him when he gets here. Show him that he's the same puppet as me. Trapped in the same sick play. Okay, so let's break this all down. If you hadn't gathered it already from his recordings, we can tell Gerard is completely off his rocker, but not fully. The first recording basically confirms the main reason for Gerard murdering those officers was specifically so that the LSPD would send their best of the best, aka D Platoon, aka us, the players. He mentions that he wants to show D Platoon that they're all puppets and that they are all just cogs in the machine for something greater. The second recording implies that Gerard aims to die in this raid, that this will be his last mission and he hopes others will pick up where he left off. He's basically wanting to go out like a martyr. The third really gets into his paranoia, as he claims that they are watching him, as well as stating that the food, water, and air are all diseased. Now the fourth is where things start to get saucy. He says, Judge will come. If you don't know already, Judge is one of the characters you can play as. It's this dude. Gerard states that he's seen his training and his methods and knows what kind of man he is. Whether or not this implies Gerard was once part of the LSPD or he simply knows Judge by watching him and new people like him in the past, we don't know. To be honest, I lead more towards the latter. But Gerard also mentions that Judge is, quote, part of the cycle. 
just like him, and he'll show him that he's the same puppet. Now before we continue, let's just focus on this a little bit. This is the first instance where a suspect mentions the player character directly, judge specifically. None of these guys really have any character. Sure, they chatter and talk a little bit, but not enough to really get a read on their personalities. As we know, Gerard wanted Deep Platoon to come to him, specifically to show them the quote-unquote truth, and he especially wants Judge to see it. We don't know anything about these characters other than their names. Kinda. This video by Foxtrot19 shows Ready or Not's scrapped menu content. This scrapped content shows the character select screen and lists character bios at the bottom left. When we get to Judge, it's pretty interesting. It reads, Judge, real name, unknown. Years of service, unknown. Date of birth, unknown. His bio states that he is a recent transfer from out of state. Judge is the relatively quiet, unassuming leader of Metro PD's entry team. Though little is known about his background or life outside of work, he maintains a professional demeanor. This is all obviously subject to change as it's from an earlier build, but it's still interesting to point out nonetheless. Regardless if this is still canon or not, there's clearly something going on with Judge. Moving to the fifth recording, Gerard mentions that he tried to teach his assistant, whose name we don't know, that basically the government can listen to you on all electronics and that the cycle has to be broken. He also mentions that his mind, soul, and humanity was ripped away by them, and that all they left him with was this puppet body he inhabits. In the sixth recording, Gerard claims to have done everything they asked, and it was never good enough. But when they come out to him, he'll do to them what they did to him. And in the seventh and final recording, we see a softer side of Gerard. He apologizes to someone named Eve and blames himself that they're gone and that he didn't do enough. He then ends the recording by saying, I'll see you soon. This, coupled with the fact that he wants to be a martyr, implies that Eve is dead. Now, who is Eve? We don't know. I assume his wife, but there's really no mention of them anywhere else on this map. As we exit the basement and move upstairs to the ground floor, we can find a lot of things that just don't make sense. Let's start with the kitchen. Crudely drawn on the fridge is a mixture of equations, Latin, and gibberish. I've tried to translate some of this writing, and, well, some actually translates, and some does not. If anyone has any idea what this translates to, please let me know in the comments. Also, I should just mention now, just by how much stuff is in this house, we will most definitely be coming back here in a follow-up video at some point in the future, because I definitely missed something. Regardless, there are two takeaways from the kitchen. First, Gerard wrote something about the distortion of basic sexual rhythm, which, yeah, I have, I have no idea, and the USIA Godhead Complex. Now, what is Godhead? Godhead is defined as the essence or substance of God in Christianity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. However, a God complex is a person who may refuse to admit the possibility of their error or failure, even in the face of irrefutable evidence. I also found a book called The Godhead Complex by James Dashner, which is a book in the Maze Cutter trilogy, the follow-up to the Maze Runner trilogy, which I had no idea existed. And as a fan of the books as a kid, it kind of made me happy, and I was like, oh, shit, this is kind of cool. Anyway, the Eye of the Godhead also made me think of the Eye of Providence, or the All-Seeing Eye, or, that's right, Illuminati shit. The All-Seeing Eye is a figure that depicts an eye, often enclosed in a triangle and surrounded by rays of light, meant to represent divine providence whereby the Eye of God watches over humanity. Now, after looking at the fridge, we can clearly see this eye plastered all throughout the house, especially when we turn around and look at the projector behind us in the living room. The projector displays nine pictures with adults, kids, and babies with their eyes crossed out and the godhead eye plastered somewhere. When we get to a picture of an actual eye, we can see that this godhead eye is actually part of the USIA seal. Then the following image is just a picture of a destroyed building with no eyes or people in sight. Exiting the kitchen and the living room and into the hallway, we can spot an oddly familiar evidence board that can be found in the LSPD precinct. Moving through the hallway, we can find this drawing that can be seen all over the cabin. It's basically echoing what Gerard said on his tapes. He believes that this metaphorical they are always watching. They're in the water, they're in the food, they're in the electronics, they're in the police force, they're in everything. Gerard believes he's living in constant surveillance. Behind this drawing, we can find electronics gutted and destroyed with, interestingly enough, a box with Mind Jot written on it. Turning back around, we can find another drawing, this time with how to kill an LSPD SWAT officer by listing their weak points. Off to the corner, you can also see the writing, we need no agenda, USIA. 
Moving into what I'll call the downstairs bedroom, we find multiple evidence boards with all manner of conspiracies written all over them. Starting with the first one, we see a sticky note saying, I watch you, they watch me, with a picture and a note saying, is he one of them? More sticky notes asking if they're watching him, and more importantly, notes asking about the veterans' funding cut. They say that State Senator Fremont against Vets Barisa Cove 2C. Barisa Cove is in reference to the mission Ides of March, or the apartment map where vets attempt to assassinate this senator. Moving down the board, we see a flyer about a protest against the bill. On the floor, we can also find two newspapers that are both cut off, but I assume they say, all prepare for March against Fremont, and March won't stop Fremont. So timeline-wise, I assume this takes place before that mission, as the Left Behind attempt to assassinate him during this event. Moving on, we can find two clippings of Gerard's inspiration, talking about the failed Pancake House militia who attempted to send ricin letters in the mail. Moving to the right of the board, we can see a list of names Gerard believes to be affiliated with Godhead, as well as research reports discussing the health benefits of psychedelic drugs, such as LSD and mushrooms. There's also a snippet about former USIA lab assistant breaking his silence on some kind of experiment. So now, we are moving from Illuminati to MK Ultra. For those of you who do not know, from the 50s through the 70s, MKUltra was an illegal human experimentation program designed and undertaken by the CIA intended to develop procedures and identify drugs that could be used in interrogations to weaken individuals and force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. Yes, this actually happened. Finishing up on the board, we find references to the DeBanco strike and the rising homelessness and crime plaguing Los Sueños. Moving on to another evidence board, it's just reused assets with sticky notes and gibberish all over the LSPD evidence board. Finding a whiteboard, we see a multitude of equations, the godhead eye drawing we saw earlier, and more Latin that kind of translates, but not very well. Finding another evidence board, we see a map of Los Sueños and articles talking about mysterious assassinations, missing persons, and deaths. There's also an article about Edmund McFarlane, the man behind some kind of faster communication system. This is a reference to the tech boom coming to America as discussed in my prior video. We find an article about the USIA LSD experiment leaking and the controversy surrounding it with the two images of the heads of the program, but we don't really get much more. There's also the same picture of the destroyed building as seen on the projector with mysterious accident with USIA something, I can't really make it out, same man in all three something. While all that is interesting in its own right, what stands out to me the most on this board is this list right here. The list of MLO experiment subjects leaked. Most of them in places of power today. Law enforcement, politics, national intelligence. When I found this, my brain exploded. MLO is the Mariposa Lily Order, a faction that has popped up in trailers and developer updates. I was saving it until now, but back on the first evidence board, there's another reference to MLO experimentation with some kind of document here. Currently, we do not know much about these guys, but they're creepy as f I mean, just look at this trailer. And now we know they did slash do experiments? I was under the assumption that they were simply domestic terrorists, but I think this rabbit hole goes far deeper than I thought. Expect a dedicated video on MLO at some point in the future because that's a whole other topic for another day. On this board, we can also find a reference to the Wenderley Hills Hotel, where the mission check-in in takes place. Something about J. Watt meeting H. L. Davis, both names listed on the MLO experiment list. Turning around, we find insane ramblings of satanic orbital fluid extraction. 
which is something about slime being injected into the eyes. Yeah, we're just gonna move on. The last evidence board has instructions on how to prepare ricin, and interestingly enough, this recipe was a coded message on the USIA website that a German cryptologist figured out. He would comment saying, I think it's definitely noteworthy that the USIA would publish this note, knowing full well what it's about. Below is the code that I tried deciphering with the key on the left, but didn't really come up with anything. Maybe I made a mistake, but who knows, I doubt Void would actually put a coded message on how to make ricin in, in their game. I... I think? There are also a few newspapers in this room that basically confirm that this mission takes place after Twisted Nerve, Meth House, and Hide and Seek, Port Raid. But other than that, that's basically it for this room. Moving upstairs, we see even more eyes and sticky notes leading up the stairs where we can find a crudely drawn USIA seal on the floor, a larger drawing of how to kill a SWAT officer, as well as a police officer drawing with a note saying, controlled by Godhead. But really, there isn't much upstairs. It's all basically more of what we saw downstairs, reused assets and next to nothing outside. Other than that, that is basically all I found. As I said prior, I'm sure I missed something. We will definitely come back to this in the future, but for now, Let's just analyze what we have. Basically what we have here is a man with a severe case of schizophrenia. However, just because he's interpreting reality abnormally does not necessarily mean he's not all there. Gerard was a USIA analyst, meaning he's a pretty smart cookie. Looking at the job description for a CIA analyst, they basically examine and evaluate information gathered from individuals, foreign media, and satellites from around the world. Analysts specialize in having their finger on the pulse of anything and everything. From what we see around the cabin, I think it's pretty safe to assume Gerard was good at his job. But I think Gerard saw something. There's something going on in Los Sueños that he found, and it somehow broke him. He went crazy and began surveilling all over Los Sueños. We don't know what he saw, but chances are it has something to do with the USIA and the MLO. A part of me feels like they're linked. I have a feeling that the MLO is a cell within all major law enforcement and government agencies, and they are the real ones in control. They are the puppet masters. I assume Gerard discovered this fact, and when he started digging, it became more and more clear that he was just a puppet. He mentions puppets and cycles a lot throughout his recordings, so we know the puppet, or puppets, are those who think they're working for the good guys, but are just working for the real puppeteers. MLO, perhaps, or maybe something else. Now, the cycle is what's interesting. I think the cycle refers to someone discovering the truth and the powers that be silencing them. We find pictures and reports of people disappearing or dying mysteriously. I think these are the people who got too close, and then they got to them. It's the cycle of discovery and silence. So Gerard basically discovered this Illuminati-like cell within the USIA and started digging deeper and learned that they are everywhere. And also, I have a feeling that if Eve was indeed his wife, then she was quite sick with cancer or something else bad. While Gerard was uncovering all of this and going way too deep into the rabbit hole, he neglected his wife. Her condition got worse, and then she died. Gerard blames himself because he neglected her in her time of need. He could have done so much more, but now she's gone and all he's left with is his conspiracies. So he digs deeper. The cell obviously caught on and didn't like what he was doing, but they obviously didn't kill Gerard. I think they tortured him. I think they used that LSD MK Ultra mind altering experiment and basically fried his mind. They probably did a clockwork orange on him and kept showing him subliminal messages with their reoccurring eye motif. This, coupled with the fact that he knows they are everywhere and in every organization, gave him that fixation on the all seeing eye, or that they are always watching him. Then they released him. Because what's he gonna do? He had his mind fried and who's gonna believe this nut job? So the reason why he wants to attack every government agency in Los Sueños is because he doesn't know who is with them. So if he doesn't know who's who, what's the alternative? You clean house. You get rid of everyone. Gerard also mentions Judge as part of the cycle and that he'll show him that he's the same puppet. I have a feeling that Judge is starting to catch on. That if the cancelled menu bio is still somewhat canon, then Judge found something at his prior precinct that maybe gave him an inkling that something is up. They transferred him to Los Sueños so that he would get off their trail, but that itch was still there. And Gerard, while surveilling the LSPD, noticed this. He saw how well-trained Judge was, so he knew that Judge would only be sent out after the most dangerous suspects. Gerard knew no one would believe the ravings of a madman, so he compiled all the evidence he could find and killed those police officers, prompting D-Platoon, the best of the best, to go after him. And while D-Platoon is in the cabin, 
Judge would see everything. Gerard hopes that when Judge sees all of this, it would confirm all of Judge's prior suspicions and he would pick up where Gerard left off and finally root out all of the deep-seated corruption. Jesus, does your brain hurt as much as mine does right now? The deeper I went into this mission, the crazier I felt, but holy shit, the quality of level design and environmental storytelling in Ready or Not is off the charts. There is still so much to unpack here. What's up with the rice and recipe on the USIA website? Who's the assistant? What are the MLO experiments? Who is behind it all? Who the hell is Judge? It's all so fascinating, and I cannot wait to explore this further.